For one, we lead like Christ. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How did Christ build his church Absolutely. or establish his church? He walked around and he challenged people mm-hmm. to what? Lay down everything you have and follow me. That's it. Now, I'm not saying that we got to walk around and tell people, all right, quick the job and follow me. Right, no, right, 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 <laughs> no. Right. it's like you have to give up something in order to follow God. And a lot of times it's tied to the thing that is most close to your heart. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you have to give up your family. I ain't saying that you got to, you know, divorce your wife and your kids and <laughs> <laughs> sell your house and your, all that stuff and follow Jesus. No, it means what are you prioritizing in your life as an idol? Come on. That Jesus wants to take priority of. Mm-hmm. You have to remove that. Nine times out of 10 is going to be money. Nine times out of 10 is going to be fame. It's going to be some kind of pride ridden or pride rooted attribute that we, that we have. Mm-hmm. We have to, Separate ourselves from that Mm -hmm. and put on the spirit of God. Come on. Prioritize him. Make him first. Yes, sir. Like you just said, like, how do, how do we, we we're in this, this season of, of revival where this revival starts. It starts in us. Yes, sir. It starts with us. First of all, leading like Christ. Yes, sir. Loving people like Christ. Sir. And I think that's the biggest thing that is missing now because yes, you want like even though i yeah i troll the trolls yes <laughs> mm-hmm. but the biggest thing is that you have to you have to love people right where they're at yes sir and so if someone's messed up and all this other stuff like it's i get it but you're not going to talk sideways about god come on you're not going to talk sideways about my savior yes sir but we can talk and have a conversation Absolutely. you can be yourself but I'm going to correct you and I'm going to love you right. in the same way. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, it just makes me think about this one opportunity, this one time I had um, talked to this guy. And he was, uh, we were, I was with my church and we were doing this 4th of July thing. I believe I shared this before, but I don't know. But we was at the 4th of July thing. We were just walking around. We were talking. Uh, we were just telling people, to, you know, about our church, getting them trying to come to church. This one guy, he goes and talks to the police. I guess he was talking to the police about us because he goes and talks to the police. And then he immediately comes and talks to me. Mm. And immediately he's, he's asking me stupid questions. He's like, who is God? What's the G mean? What's the O mean? What the D mean? All these different <laughs> things. I'm like, bro, like what? <laughs> <laughs> but he was clearly drunk. Right. He was clearly under right. some kind of influence. And I sat there and I took the time with him. I just talked to him. Mm. And after we talked for a while, I saw like the layers start breaking off. Mm. I challenged him with this one question. I said, well, sir, it was like, you have a, do you have a child? He said, yeah, I have a little daughter. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, I would do anything for my daughter. I was like, okay. So if if your daughter grew up and turned their back on you and decided not not to love mm-hmm. you anything like that anymore, on, it's like, would you still love your daughter? It's like, yeah, in the whole wide world. It was like, that's how God's love is for us. Come on, TJ. It's like it don't matter what we do. God still loves us, and He still loves you. And when I said that, that man broke down and started crying. Mm. All of the, the drunkness and everything he was in, it that worked. man broke down and started crying. Mm-hmm. And I prayed for him. Yes, sir. Now, that was a seed planted because I know we didn't lead him to Christ and nothing like that because he didn't want it. But he felt the presence of God Come in on. that moment. He felt the love of God in that moment. The problem is we want to beat people up with the scripture. Mm-hmm. We want to prove that we're right so much that we, that we forget that it is what? By love and kindness come on. have I drawn thee. Come on, come on, come on. We forget that. Come on. We think it's all head knowledge and book knowledge. No. It's the love of God that draws people in. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. We just came out of Easter. Come on. That's the greatest display of love come that on. anyone has ever shown to anyone. Come on. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Come on. We can't do the drawing on our own. No, sir. <laughs> we can't. No, sir. We need Christ and we need his love. And so the revival has to start in us. How do we be the church? That's how. It starts with us. It starts with our own personal walk. It starts with how we, we fast, how we pray, how we really care about what's going on in our own heart. Yes, sir. And what we care about what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. Because this world is dying. Just like you said, there's young people that's dying. There's young people that's dying. There's young people that don't even care about their own lives. Getting in random shootouts for no reason. No reason. And don't care. And don't care. And think that their lives are worthless. No, you have a life. You, your life is so worth it to God. 
He has a purpose and a plan. And I tell this to people all the time. No, your purpose and your plan isn't going to be you're going to be a preacher. and all. No, God has a plan for your life. Your life isn't in the streets. On, <laughs> your life isn't in the drugs. It isn't in that type of lifestyle. Your life has a meaning. It has a purpose. And it, you won't be able to understand that or achieve that until you know God. So it, it really sounds like, bro, that we have to somehow our generation has to overcome this lazy spirit. Mm, yes. We have a lazy spirit where we won't search out the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We won't because we want instant gratification mm. in every area of our lives. And what's happening is the enemy is using that because we have to remember he was with God when God was doing everything. Mm hmm. He was one of the angels. Come on. He was right there. He was right there. He was right there. So he's not a new millennial or generational <laughs> Z type demon. Mm -hmm. Things that there are, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. Because there is nothing new under the sun, that, that means there are also things that it says, and I believe, I don't I want to say the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to have to double check. I'm not going to do it now. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Deuteronomy, where it says there can be attached to you four generations of sins yeah. of different things that you're dealing with mm -hmm. that goes back so far. But if you're not talking or searching now, now I know that takes two generations, yeah. you know, and, and I think it's our responsibility you know, especially, you know, with my daughter, I make sure that I'm very honest with her. Yeah. You know, I'm not graphic, yeah. but I'm very honest because the enemy starts early. He starts way early. He starts early to try to confuse the mind because my daughter's growing up in a time where two moms are dropping off a child and different mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And what you do is your business. It's just not something that I believe in. Right. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I believe in the word of God. Mm -hmm. I believe in Jesus. I believe that there are certain things that has to happen. So if you're mad, don't be mad at me. Be mad at the word of God. Be mad at God. <laughs> right. Period. <laughs> but it's because there is a standard. Now I have to be honest and say, so there are certain things that are going to come. Yeah. The Bible Bible talks about the three biggest sin, sins are, uh, um, um, oh shoot, the pride, the lust oh, of, yeah, the the flesh, lust of the flesh, pride the, of the heart, the uh, yeah, the pride of life, um, the lust of the eye. No, yeah, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the um, and lust of the eye, something like that. Y'all know what I'm saying. We can look it up later. Anyway, <laughs> it's in there. It's in there. Um, but at the end of the day, there these are the main things that are attacking us as mm -hmm. a people in our generation because and all of that when you look at it um all of that has to deal with people really not taking the time to yeah. center themselves yeah and see exactly what's happening in certain moments and in, in time yeah. this is why we you know you and you and myself and those who all call themselves preachers who proclaim the gospel yeah. this is why we have to remain focused mm -hmm. this is why revival has to happen it has to because if in turn people are not this is why we have we assemble together this is why we go to the church meetings yeah. because there are things that you deal with that you need an understanding yeah. about yeah yeah you need clarity about. Yeah. And and if your heart is not open, just like the gentleman, you even though he came at you in a way, but what I heard was a cry for help. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That was a cry for help. Sometimes people cry sounds a little bit different. It sounds a lot different. And it can be offensive. Mm -hmm. It can be, it can come off in ways that, but if you look, if you're in the place, especially as a believer, that you need to be and you're revived, mm -hmm. you can help bring revival. Mm-hmm. Then because then in turn, then the churches, the holy temple will fill up. Yeah. Because I need to know the people are gonna be like, I need to know what are you doing? Yeah. So then in turn, now they're following you. Mm -hmm. Follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'll lead you to the place where we worship, where we praise, where we do all this, where we learn about mm -hmm. what God is saying, yeah. where we're edified as the people of God. This is all what Jesus wanted us to do. Yeah. And nothing it, it doesn't have to be any more, any less, everything else that comes with it, the glitz and the glamour, you know, everything has its place, cool beans. However, I'm longing for that day. Yeah. That when we're all on one accord. Yeah. As the body of Christ. Yeah. 
because a great revival is it's coming. It's coming like never before. And we have to be ready because then we'll we'll never he's the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So, yes, we're going to have to endure some things, mm -hmm. but we ain't going to be begging out here. Mm -mm. We ain't going to be wanting out here mm -mm. because it's people like us, bro, and people who, who have our, is a remnant of us yeah. who are getting it. Yeah.